All of nature is a brutal abomination. Nowhere is this more true than in the most crude of environments, the ocean. As one dives into the water, it becomes clear that the water itself is a primitive organism without any of the clear physical demarcations that define the surface world. Gravity is truly a moralizing force, and without its constant pull, there is no individuality. Primitive life at the most microscopic levels ensures a base of biological perversion that opportunistically envelops any spare surface. If corals appeared on the insides of our lungs, we would acknowledge them as the cancer that they are. But it is their slow growth that causes us to see them as a benign threat. Sped up, it is clear that starfish, considered by some to be beautiful and sculptural, are engaged in a constant state of repulsive orgiastic fornication. The starfish regenerating or making its own stomach inside out is a perfect metaphor for the ocean as a whole, a giant stomach eternally digesting. The jellyfish inappropriately labelled as a fish rather seems an example of happenstance, conjured out of eventuality with no character to speak of. Just because the force of evolution has allowed the jellyfish to exist does not mean that they should not all be wiped out. One wonders if jellyfish were more delicious, whether vegetarians and vegans would consume them. After all, a carrot has more brains than a jellyfish. And yet, just as we incorrectly labeled them as fish, so do we humanize other ocean life with language. I propose that schools of fish be properly referred to as swarms. It is clear that no intelligence comes out of a large grouping of mindless fish. The more advanced life in the ocean still shows a lack of substance offset by evolutionary gimmicks like these patterns displayed on the sides of cuttlefish. I have a great interest in cuttlefish as they are as delicious as they are bizarre. These psychedelic visuals make the cuttlefish into a living form of proto-cinema, perhaps sparking the imaginations of ancient peoples that fished for them. In the 1990s, I worked with film director David Cronenberg to produce the film Existence, but our partnership collapsed when I insisted that any depiction of the future include wall-sized television screens made from bioengineered cuttlefish flesh. I can no longer tolerate this bland mode of documentary. I am a poet and not a physiotherapist. Any true examination of the sea should be from the perspective of a rotting whale in a state of slow motion decay over months. And until this is so, I am unable to take further interest in this material.